and start grading yourself Sunday night. But do, but no, your grade's going to be shitty a lot if you set yourself up for, for failure. Welcome to the Spartan Becca series on Spartan Up with Jared Cogswell, Director of Sport, and Yancey Culp, Director of Programming. In today's episode, this one's for you guys. This is the one, if you've fallen off of that training regimen, that program, that fitness program, this one is called Get Back on That Horse. This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by Athletic Brewing Company and FitAid. Race dirty, recover clean with FitAid Sports Recovery Drink. Visit lifeaidbevco.com and enter the code SPARTAN30 at checkout to get 30% off their full line of functional lifestyle beverage blends and Go Powder Sticks. Athletic Brewing Company. Their innovative process allows them to brew great tasting craft beer without the alcohol. New customers can get 10% off their entire order with the code SPARTAN10. Limit one per customer. What's up, Spartans? Welcome to the DECA series on the Spartan Up podcast. I'm your co-host, Jared Cogswell, along with my brother, sporting a sweet new do today, Yancey Culp. <laughs> and, oh, man, he's got his, his Johnny Camaro shirt on. He's bringing it today. How you doing, brother? Man, I went in to get a haircut. You know it was time to get a haircut, and I went in there, and I just, I just need to clean it up. So I'm on the email. I'm not paying a lick of attention to what she's doing. You guys know this today compared to this yesterday. I was like, ooh, I was up here. You saw it. And she was finished. And I was like, you know, you had like that two seconds. Like, whoa. I'm thinking, man, she took a little too much off. And then I said, wait a second. I kind of like it. I had a little military boot camp flashback. Mm. If you're listening on Spotify or whatever, you can't see it. But I'm showing a picture of my Navy boot camp when I was a young 20-year-old. I got the high and tight almost. I got uh, I got the Luke Perry sideburns going from 90210, brother. It was a, I feel clean and fresh. I even shaved. <laughs> you I got home. Get ready fresh, for the podcast. Uh, you no, seriously, you're looking good, man. I, I, Thanks, I've man. known you. I've known you for quite a few years now, and and I'd say that's that's the best haircut I've seen. The Luke Perry, right there. Yeah. Right? <laughs> We're going 90210 today. My mom would be so proud of me. She loves when I get a clean cut. <laughs> hey, so today, you know, you and I were talking about this the other day. Um, longtime fitness professionals and, you know, we've dealt with a, a lot of challenges working with clients and, and so forth. And, you know, I, I, I really say this um, humbly you know, in a lot of ways, despite being in this this uh, world of fitness for so many years, um, we're we're not uh, the exception to some of the challenges that that it comes with a fitness lifestyle. We talk about a life fueled by fitness, and we know what it does for us uh, physically, mentally, and emotionally. And I was I was sharing with you the other day that you know I was starting to I was starting to get normal again I was starting to feel normal again and and sharing a little bit of my story with you you know I had a great summer uh, here in Colorado and and getting up and down a, a lot of a lot of mountains and and some fourteeners and I I felt like. I felt like I was revived again, you know, like, oh man, I'm, I'm ready to go do some hard climbing again. I'm like the, the old JC is back. Mm -hmm. Right. And, uh, then, uh, you know, sometimes, sometimes you get some injuries that occur along the way, uh, along the journey. And, and, you know, I was definitely spending a lot of time on the downhill. It's, it's not, it wasn't winter here yet. And, uh, heading down the, the hills, uh, you know, kind of, kind of beat you up a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. And I got back from a trip in Arizona and and some of us were climbing some of the mountains in Arizona and uh got a little bit of knee pain. And uh so I I just started adjusting my workouts a little bit, but I was I was on that I was kind of fearful, right? I was getting scared that I was going to lose my fitness, right? And then some travel pops up, you know, that's, it, it comes with, uh, the, the territory of, of, uh, what we do, uh, professionally. So a little bit of travel and I'm just not a good, uh, road warrior, so to speak, when it comes to being able to, you know, 
go work on the road and and get the workouts in. It's always, you know, I always bring, you know, way too many workout clothes <laughs> in that big red bag that you've seen plenty of times, Yance. And uh, then when I got back from Spain, um, you know, I had like a stomach virus, you know, so, and I was laid up for five days and I, I started getting a little bit of depression, you know, it, it was messing with me mentally and emotionally. And I was like, dang, I, I had such a great summer and I felt so good. And, and I was feeling, I, I felt like that power was back. And I, I started come up with excuses of, you know, well, I'm not going to be able to get in the gym today, or I'm not going to be able to go for a run, or I'm not going to go up to those mountains. But the bottom line is, is I have to do that. I have to get back on the horse as soon as possible, you know, but I've been proud a little bit, you know, this isn't my normal way of approaching fitness and, and exercise and training, but I've been proud of, of not being too hard on myself, you know, and I, I don't want to make this podcast all about me and my story, but there's, I think there's a lot of listeners that can relate to this because what we've seen happen in the, the fitness industry and working with clients is once they fall off that horse, it's, it's hard to get back on. And, and I agree with that because once you're in the zone, it's, it's easy to stay there really. But when yeah. you fall off, it's hard to get back on. And, and what I've been doing is, is just really focus on progress more than ever. And I'm the, I'm the, the anti guy when it comes to like, uh, seek progress, not perfection. I, I like to say seek perfection, even though you'll never get there, you'll get closer to it if you, if you seek it. Mm -hmm. Um, but we need to celebrate that progress. So, I don't know. I, I just thought maybe this was a topic that that we could cover today because I want to encourage people that have fallen off that horse or uh, or on that roller coaster of fitness to get back on, to get back at it as soon as possible and give them a few tips and, and methods um, to, to, you know, to sustain it, to get more consistent with their fitness and their training. So I'll leave you with that. Yeah, you know, I was my wife and I were doing a fun little practice the other day, and and we started going back to, uh, and I'm kind of touching on experience here that I, I know we're lucky to have a lot of experience working with a lot of wonderful people, from a personal training environment to a large group, small group environment, large teams. Um, she's like, gosh, dang, I, th you know, you do the math when you had your you had your your fitness business, you. Rough math shows you coached about 6,000 group exercise workouts. So, and I know you know exactly what, what happens in those. So, we have seen so many people. You know, we talked about the roller coaster recently. You bring up, you know, you fall off the horse, and all of a sudden, you don't see somebody come back for a long time. Something keeps them out of camp or the group class for, for a few weeks, and you don't see them coming back. And, and I think you, you said something that, that was very telling. It's like you you were in this focused program. You were climbing to the top of the mountains. I mean, every, almost every day, five, six days a week, you had something very purposeful, a, a workout, purposeful workout happening in your life. And that slowly got pulled away from you. Travel, injuries and whatnot. And it's like you you felt the level of, of depression set in. And, and I wanted to, I remember when you were saying that, I was like, I got to make this crystal clear. Some coaches and trainers in the fitness world Make it look like it's easy for them. It's like they're up here and this is easy for me. them. No, no, no. Everybody listening and watching to this, Jared and I have been doing this a long time, 50 plus years combined, and it's hard for us as well. We've fallen off the horse. We've we've gotten on the roller coaster ride before. I think any coach or trainer, that's it's, it's their world. It's what we do for a living. Anybody that tells you otherwise is lying to you. We've fallen off. What happens for all of us and most of you is so often we set ourselves up for failure. There's so many of these programs out here that promise, the, you know, crazy the, the crazy results and the nutrition plans and all this stuff, the diets and the New Year's resolutions plans, plans, and it's not realistic. And and it's like you gotta you gotta dive in head first. 
And you said in the pre-show, we were prepping a little bit, and you said, you know what? And maybe it's been a week since you've trained. And you go out and you get one 20-minute session in. You got to celebrate that. That's a huge win. You're, I mean, you are back. You're back on the horse. Mm-hmm. And it's like we, 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 ha- we, we, we put too much emphasis on, on kind of grading ourselves and are, are we doing enough? And first off, it's important to remember that if you've been consistent and you fall off for a little bit, you don't you don't lose it. You know, I, I work with professional athletes, kind of middle of the road athletes, beginners, all levels. You don't lose your fitness quickly. Now, if you stay off the horse for a long, long time, mm-hmm. consistently off the horse, you'll you'll lose it. You'll wake up in a few months and it's like, whoa, I've seen a shift in my mental health and my physical health. But I think a key thing that, that, that I'll always like to dive into with my clients is don't set yourself up for failure. And if you get two or three workouts in this week, massive, let's freaking celebrate that. That was a beautiful week. So anyway. Yeah. Well, you said a key word there too that I've used quite a bit with clients and, and it's the word purpose, right? And I do think that Everybody out there when it comes to their personal fitness has to find their purpose when it comes to their individual fitness. It could be for their um, mental health. It could be because they strive to compete in something. Um, it could be weight loss. I just never feel like weight loss and some of those other things are, are purposeful enough to sustain it long term. Because once you lose the weight, then what? Um, I've had discussions with um, clients, you know, um, some of them with grandkids, you know, that just says, I, you know, I just, they're, they're fighting depression. They're not getting, they're not being consistent with their training and their exercise. And, you know, we've even had conversations about, hey, maybe your purpose on this planet is to be a healthy grandmother or a healthy grandfather. And so, you know, so that you can do things with your grandkids for as long as possible uh, and not miss out on those moments. Um, but I, I think the other thing, and, and I, I don't want, I don't mean to get too deep on this, but we need to count our wins more than our losses. We're so hard on ourselves as, as individuals and people that we forget a, a lot of the good things that we're doing for ourselves and you know, and, and I, I recently, you know, I, I've got a close relationship with, uh, you know, I, I feel like is one of the biggest motivators out there and that's Todd Durkin. And I surround myself with, with his coaches as well. I'm lucky to be one of his coaches, but with every Sunday night or Monday morning, we share each other's what we call W lags. And that's a list of your wins from the previous week. Um, your losses, uh, your aha moments, you know, like, uh, you know, it could be a reminder or a life lesson and then your goals for the upcoming week. And ever since I've been doing that, you know, I always put in there, like I need to have a minimum of four to five workouts, you know, um, it depends on the week and knowing what I have ahead of me, but I'm writing that down. That's a, that's, it's making a personal promise to myself. Now, if I don't reach those four workouts or five workouts or even sit like a couple of weeks ago, I said I needed to work out four times. I worked out seven times. Okay. So I went above and beyond what, what my own personal goal was. Um, but I was able to count that as a win. And what, when you're counting your wins, no matter how small those wins may be, it helps you build confidence, you know? But what I was really striving to do in, in, in this process. And I just, you know, I just, uh, created my W lags for this, this coming week is just start small. Like you said, don't set yourself up for failure in this, in this moment, you have to aim for progress. You know, I even had this conversation with my daughter the other day, you know, have you been exercising Have, have you been training? And she said, no, nah, dad, I haven't, you know, I've been working a lot and this and that. And I said, hey, that's okay. You know, um, wh- what's your plan for the week? And she said, ah, I'm, I'm going to definitely, you know, she loves yoga, you know, those types of things. She wants, she wants to do more of those types of things that she enjoys. 
I said, well, just aim for one time next week. If you get two times, man, that's that's a that's double the victory right there. So it's it I I think it really just goes back to counting our wins and not being as hard on ourselves. But like you said, I I guess I want to create some urgency because I know what this meant for me personally is to get back on that horse as soon as possible. You know, yep. it doesn't have to be the same ride that you were on. Um, you'll eventually get there, but get back, get back on that horse and ride just a little bit each day. We'll be right back to the interview, but first a little bit from Athletic Brewing Company, today's sponsor. You don't have to choose between an ice cold beer after a race and your health. Thanks to Athletic Brewing Company. Athletic Brewing Company's innovative process allows them to brew great tasting craft beers without the alcohol, from IPAs to stouts to golden ales and more. They offer a full selection of beers starting at only 50 calories. So you can keep your head clear and enjoy the refreshing taste of beer anytime and anywhere. And they're part of a program called Two for the Trails. For every product purchased, Athletic Brewing Company donates 2% of sales to protecting and restoring local trails. They're pioneering a craft brew revolution. You don't have to sacrifice being your best to enjoy a great brew. In fact, check out their website to see a list of awards that their beers have won. Check your local store, but if you can't find it, they'll ship it. Place an order at athleticbrewing.com, and you can get free shipping on two six-packs or more. And new customers can save 10% off the entire order with the code SPARTAN10. Limit one per customer. FitAid is a clean sports recovery drink. Race dirty, recover clean. You've heard us say it before. FitAid is 45 calories, certified non-GMO tested, vegan, paleo-friendly, certified gluten-free, kosher, and never contains any artificial colors, flavors, sweeteners, or sodium. Even the zero sugar option, it's keto-friendly and has only five calories, and it's naturally sweetened with monk fruit and stevia. And then there's FitAid's recovery blend. It has glutamine, glucosamine, turmeric, BCAAs, omega-3s, CoQ10, a full B complex, and electrolytes. It's perfect for after your workout, your hike, your bike ride, or your race. Can you imagine drinking a plain old soda when you could have this? FitAid is a product of LifeAid, the functional beverage company, and they're an official partner of our Spartan Race series. Listen, each ice-cold can of FitAid, it contains ingredients to help your body recover, and it never contains any artificial flavors or sweeteners. So visit lifeaidbevco.com, enter the code SPARTAN30 at checkout, and save 30%, plus you get fast, free shipping. Okay, back to the interview. Yeah, and I'm going to lean in on one of our partners, MyZone, um, and I, I've actually learned, I've been doing this for a long time before MyZone was in my life, and it's, I've learned that, okay, Coach Yancey, who I, I consider myself very fit for a 49-year-old, about to turn 50, and I, my zone has me tracking my fitness more than I used to. And I'm the king of, like, I've always set myself up for success. I, I firmly believe in my mind that, a, you know, if I only, I've only been able to get a 20 minute workout in today, it's a great day. Well, you know, I stay relatively consistent with that. And I find myself some months barely getting to my 1300 mark, you know, with the World Health Organization, my zone mark, that they partner with that. And I'm like, you know what? It was, it was very telling that, okay. It's enough. It's enough. Those weeks when I just barely get in my my minimal fitness, you know, five five sessions in, maybe 20, 20 25 minutes, I end up meeting my mark. And I think when we talk about not setting yourself up for failure, a, a strategy that I use, and I think everybody out there listening to this could, could implement, this is a very easy strategy to implement. Sunday night, I, I know some people will argue this, I consider Sunday night the end of the week. When I lay my head on the pillow Sunday night, I always grade my week as a fitness professional, as a father, as a, a husband, as, as as an athlete, as, as my, how my training went, mental, physical health, all that. And if I think so many people are looking up at this really high standard so let's say you go 52 weeks and you grade yourself every Sunday. You're going to, by the time the year's over, you're going to say, man, I had a shitty, I had a lot of shitty grades on Sunday night when I put my head on the pillow. I don't hardly ever, I can't remember the last time I had a shitty grade. When I, when I grade myself, I'm, I'm happy with where I stand Sunday night. Now I'll be honest, true sir, I'm honest. There's been times when I've like, I've popped out of bed and popped out, knocked out 50 push-ups. Like, ah, 
just don't feel like I needed something else or I'd answer a few more emails. I knew something was hanging, but I never set myself up in a position where there's this crazy high thing up here that's not going to be, that's going to be unattainable and would rip the rug out from under my current lifestyle. If I'm ever setting myself up in a way that's going to rip the rug out from under me and throw my world upside down, that's setting yourself up for failure and you're probably not going to be able to stack a lot of good days on top of each other. And remember folks, um, mm-hmm. you, you know, and I've had the wonderful opportunity to work with a lot of professional athletes um, in several sports. The, the ones that do the best set themselves up for success. You'll see a lot of them taking two full days off every week. No work. It's like, that's insane. Like, that's crazy. Guess what? They're getting through their season uninjured. If we do have an injury, we call it taking advantage of the injury, meaning we got a shoulder injury. Well, guess what? We're going to have a phenomenal training month from the abdominals down. We're going to take advantage of that time. At first, that's hard to realize, but there's all kinds of ways to navigate this journey. But getting back to that little easy thing you can implement and a little nugget from the podcast is start grading yourself Sunday night. But but no, your grade's going to be shitty a lot if you set yourself up for, for failure. Yeah, absolutely. A couple other, you know, I guess tips that, that I would throw out there is, is be intentional as soon as you wake up in, you know, in the morning, you know, really again, with goal setting helps that, um, you know, I'm, I'm putting my goals out there on a weekly basis, hopefully checking off the boxes as the week progresses, but every day is, is led with, with intention. And I'm, I'm asking myself before I get out of bed that given day, who am I going to be? What kind of husband am I going to be? What kind of dad am I going to be? What kind of coworker? Um, but then also, you know, what's the thing that fuels me? And that's, that's exercise and training. You know, that's, Mm -hmm. that's where I feel that, that power, uh, within myself, physically, mentally, emotionally, even if it's for a short period, not every day is perfect, but man, I'll tell you, uh, five minutes, 10 minutes post-workout, man, that's, that's just a good, good feeling. And even today I've got 101 excuses not to get to the gym, right? But what's going to get me there is thinking about how I'm going to feel after I leave there. And I know how I'm going to feel. And I, I thrive for that feeling. That's why getting back on the horse is, is important. So I guess, you know, everybody has their own rituals. Um, I think it, it's important to stay consistent with those rituals. I think it's also like we keep continuing to say here, you know, don't be so hard on yourself. Set yourself up for success, even if it means just a little bit of success compared to where you were be or, or where you were or, or, you know, even if you're comparing yourself to somebody else, which I advise not to do. Okay. Mm-hmm. Be the best version of yourself and strive for that 1% better every day. Well, I was going to go for a run this morning and then I reminded myself that I've got a little, I got a little workout plan tonight at Hit Athletic, our Austin affiliate here, DECA affiliate. Me and three other old dudes are tackling the ho- DECA holiday challenge, members versus machine. I said, I got to be, the old man's got to be fresh and ready to <laughs> drop the hammer with some old friends I have here in, in Austin. And on that note, my, my final statement is going to be, and we've brought this up. We actually shot a whole podcast on this subject. There's nothing wrong with saying, I'm going to be selfish with a little bit of my time today, some Yancey time, some Jared time, some you time. May only be 20 minutes. You're going to pause your whole world. Everything is going to pause, and you're going to go take care of yourself for that 20, 30-minute workout, and that will be enough. Listen, that's enough. It doesn't have to be something crazy aggressive, and here's what happens over time. That's a good day because you were a little selfish with your time. We're going to stack a lot of good days on top of each other. And that eventually turns into greatness. So be selfish. It's okay to be selfish. Everybody in your world will benefit. And you will be a little better version of yourself. And you will be able to serve them a little more because your beautiful machine is fit. And it's able to say yes to taking care of them and even having some fun with them as we get older on those vacations and whatnot with the kids and the grandkids. So be selfish. That's our. That's my second big nugget of this little cast we're shooting out today. Now, you know what? You stole your own quote. I was going to steal it from you because I was going to end with this. 
take care of that beautiful machine and get back on that horse. Yeah. Let, hey, here, here's the go. So when you're pushing 50, you can still wear the half shirt, baby. <laughs> Thanks for listening to this episode of Spartan Up. Do you want to be ready for anything? Download Joe's free ebook at spartan.com slash ready for anything. Do you know someone who needs a little help staying motivated, staying informed, getting or staying mentally and physically resilient? We're here three days every week with a mix of content to help you stay strong. From mindset to nutrition and everything in between. Listen every Tuesday to hear Joe DeSena, Spartan Race founder and CEO. And the rest of the week, join us for DECA, Endurance, and Classic episodes. See you next time. This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by Athletic Brewing Company and FitAid. Race dirty, recover clean with FitAid Sports Recovery Drink. Visit lifeaidbevco.com and enter the code SPARTAN30 at checkout to get 30% off their full line of functional lifestyle beverage blends and Go Powder Sticks. Athletic Brewing Company. Their innovative process allows them to brew great tasting craft beer without the alcohol. New customers can get 10% off their entire order with the code SPARTAN10. Limit one per customer.